Listen up guys, this is real important. This video was aired back in 2018. Listen to what this guy has to say. Disappearing in Russia and not only in Russia. Um, I think uh, for me it's important that I say that. And I hope, I'm, going, I'm not going to speak long because I was told that we would have a conversation afterwards and I think that might be the most interesting part of it because um, you have questions or views that you might want to share with me and I can't guess them in advance but there are certain things I'd like to say before we have that conversation. I'd like to say first of all that we are at an extremely dangerous moment today. Never have the relations between Russia and the United States, or the Soviet Union, that's what it was before, been at this level. During the worst times of the Cold War, when I was living in the Soviet Union, and I remember all that very, very well. Russians were anti-White House, anti-Wall Street, but not anti-American in their vast majority. In fact, there was a kind of a warm feeling vis-a-vis -vis Americans. Today, that's different. Today, it's anti-American at the grassroots level. And there's a reason for it. Another thing that is, to me, scary is that neither side seems to be afraid of nuclear weapons. 30 years ago, those of you who are of my age certainly remember an American movie called The Day After, which is about what happens to you and to your country after a nuclear strike. There was fear of these weapons as there was in the Soviet Union. There was a realization that these weapons can, and if used, will destroy our country. Today, there's a feeling that when you talk to people, it's as if there are no nuclear weapons. It really doesn't seem to play a role in how we act. And the danger of a, not a deliberate nuclear exchange, but an accidental one has grown because the level of mistrust between the two countries has grown as well. There have been several times in the past when computers warned of a nuclear attack. But it never got to the real thing because people took the time to really check it out. Now, they didn't have a long time. If an ICBM is launched from Russia, it'll take about 10 minutes for it to hit the US. So you have, a, and vice versa, obviously. Um, so you don't have a long time, but you do have some. But my feeling is that if today those same computers malfunctioned and said on either side that an attack has been launched, the response would be immediate. Because the feeling is that this is what's going to happen. Not that long ago, we were all very optimistic, weren't we? Gorbachev, Gorby. Gorbe, Russians, we're going to be friends, we're going to be... And in such a really short period of time, what, how did this happen? Why are we at the point that we are today? And I'm not saying who's to blame, because that's not a productive way of looking at things. But we should try to understand exactly what did happen. The Soviet Union, once Gorbachev took over, didn't really last very long. He came to power in March of 1985, and by December 1991, there was no more Soviet Union. It, some people say it collapsed. It didn't collapse. In a place to, called the Belovirske Pusha, which is a kind of a forest, three presidents, the president of Ukraine, the president of Belarus, and the president of Russia proper, Mr. Yeltsin decided to part company, decided to disband the Soviet Union. 
Now, each had his own reasons, definitely. But if we look at Mr. Yeltsin, his reason was very clear. He was the president of Russia, so he was number two to Gorbachev, because Gorbachev was president of uh, the Soviet Union, of which Russia was part, the largest part, but only part. Get rid of the Soviet Union, and there's no president, and you get rid of Gorbachev. And that's precisely what he did. So no more Soviet Union, quickly no more Warsaw Pact, of course. That is to say, countries that were usually called Soviet satellites were part of a military alliance with the Soviet Union. That alliance disappeared. And so the United States had to figure out, how do we deal with this new entity called Russia? How do we deal with it? There's no more Soviet Union. What is going to be US policy vis-a-vis -vis this country? And of course, Yeltsin also had to think about what is going to be Russia's attitude towards the United States. 